Okay, with apologies for the delay, good evening. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for Tuesday, December 18th. Um, previous to this meeting, the board met in executive session to consider um, litigation strategy with respect to TJA Clean Energy LLC versus Hopkinton Planning Board and to consider the purchase sale lease or value of real property in relation to open space preservation, center trail, town hall, and the Main Street uh, corridor project. Um, and now we will convene in open session and we will begin our meeting as usual with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Okay, and we will start out with our um, Open public forum. If there's anyone who would like to come up and address the board, please, please please step up to the mic and feel free. Or not. Perfect. <laughs> okay. All right. Seeing none. Um, next on our agenda is our um, consent agenda, and the items uh, for the consent agenda are as follows. Um, the Board of Selectmen will consider approving the December 4th, 2018 Board of Selectmen Minutes. Item two, request for special hours. The Board of Selectmen will consider approving a request from Dennis Wilson on behalf of Central Public House for increased hours of operation from 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. closing and increase hours for sale of alcohol from 9 p.m. to 12.30 a.m. on Monday, December 31st, 2018 into Tuesday, January 1st, 2018, New Year's Eve. Three, ambulance fund gifts. The Board of Selectmen will consider accepting ambulance fund gifts totaling $230 in memory of Thomas Roy Robeson and police department gifts. The Board of Selectmen will consider accepting gifts totaling $2,050, $500 for the police gift account, and $1,550 for the canine gift account. Would any members like to pull out any of these items for separate discussion? I would. Mr. Uh, Ted Stone. I would like to break out number two and number three. Number two and number three, request for special hours in yep. the ambulance fund. Okay. Anyone else? I would like to break out the police department gifts. So, <laughs> that leaves the board minutes. Uh, approval of board minutes for December 4th. Is there a motion to accept? So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, Mr. Tedstone, request for special hours. My, my question on this is, is his request outside of the hours of the um, existing liquor laws that we have in place? Through the chair, the request is within the hours approved under the board's licensing and alcohol licensing policy. Okay, so he really doesn't even have to come in front of us for this, correct? He does, based on his existing license. He does based on his existing license. His first application probably specified hours. Oh. Whereas they, they okay. were also inside, but now he wants to do different hours inside the same envelope. Okay, so I thought that when we approved that alcohol, well, you, I was not here for that, but when you approved that, right. you, your board, the present board, I mean the prior <laughs> board, um, that the goal was to get all the liquor licenses to say, open at nine, shut down at one. I thought that's what our goal was. That was the reason you had many, many, many hours of silly meetings on, on this. Piers, we're about to have another one. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Teston is correct. Yes, I um, love that. Yeah, and we are continuing the effort to educate applicants that they uh, can apply for the hours as specified in the policy. However, they so often choose not to. But if I could make to the chair, I thought it was 
they have that, that, that free reign, but they can cl close earlier if they wish. That's the way I, I understood the way we passed that, uh, that, that change. Operationally, the license can only reflect the hours that the applicant requests. So it's uh... <laughs> So now I'm confused. Thank you, Mr. Ted Stone. You got it, buddy. <laughs> Um, so forget the current applicant. He's done nothing wrong. We're just trying to sort through something here. We have, lot, we have hours from 10 or 11 till 1, one whatever it is. Yep. Those are the broad hours. Yep. And then we have licenses all inside those different hours. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think to your point, maybe, one of the reasons we did the broad hours from 11 to 1 or 10 to 1, whatever it was, so the police didn't have to think about who was supposed to be open and who wasn't supposed to be open. They all could be open if they wanted to. But then, since we passed that, maybe I'm answering my own question now, we've had applications come in with specific hours shorter than those longer hours, and therefore we've gone back to where we were. And so now the licenses are different around town, and now the police do have to think about who's supposed to be open and who's supposed to be closed based on different licenses. Is that, you, that's yeah. what you're saying, right? I am. Yeah, I don't understand why if, if we have adopted a bylaw in town to have the liquor licenses say everybody is able to open at 9 a, or 10 a.m., close at 1. If you choose to open at 11 and close at 2 in the afternoon, that's on you. However, your liquor license says you can, you can be open, and I don't know why. I, I mean, I understand it. Maybe it's a, a mistake on how they filled out the liquor license or, or whatever, but I don't know anybody that would that would fill out a liquor license saying, I know that you want me to stay open till one in the morning, but I'm only gonna use it till eight. <clears throat> Change at times takes longer, uh, but you're okay. <laughs> and we're continuing the education. Right. We have had instances where we clearly state, you have up until 1 a.m. to open, but people simply say, no, I want 10 p.m. Norm, is your mic on? Yeah, it's on. So are we able to change that application so that the applicant doesn't have to state hours? We just tell them that these are the hours that go with the license and you're free to I think every choose. license has to have hours on it. Exactly. So he That's could resubmit it if he wanted to. So if, if I don't know if it's a reapplication. I think it might be an amendment. Wait a minute, one at a time. You okay. think? Ms. Catino. So if, he, if they have 1 o'clock, they have to stay open until 1 o'clock? No. No. Oh. But if they... Okay, that's what I just want to make sure. So then, so, okay, that, that's fine. That, that was just my thing because... No, uh, no. Yeah. But I wouldn't have to come in every time. But, Mr. Nestrillo. Could, could we, during the renewal of... We just went through a whole series of annual renewals. Can we renew them but amend them? Just allow them to stay open until 1 and... Then if they want to close earlier, it's on them. There's a formal process for applying for change of hours. So here's where I think the problem might sit. And I think a lot of it is on perhaps not this board, but previous boards that mm -hmm. I may or may not have been on. I would agree. Um, <laughs> we wanted to create uniform hours. And I think we did create uniform hours. But then all the licenses are not uniform because the licenses go to what the applicants wanted on their license and a specific hours has to go on their license. Their insurance might be infected by the number of hours that are open and available to serve alcohol and there could be other things beyond what we were thinking about which was making it easy for our officers to drive by and see and figure out who's doing the right thing and who's not which most people always do the right thing. Um, so maybe we just spent a lot of time on mm -hmm. something that really couldn't have played out the way we hoped anyway. Is that a fair statement? Let's give it time. So far, I really think really doesn't want to get into this tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're okay. so far behind already. You know what I'm saying, though? That we. I do. Uh, I think, based on the evidence so far, you're correct. However, I think we should give this process time to unfold. We educate the public. Uh, the police department will continue also its efforts in making sure that everybody understands the new laws and hopefully. Um, there may be a change of heart on the part of the applicants. Well, I feel in the interest of the hour, we are not going to solve this right now. Um, so I would request a motion to approve 
item two on the consent agenda, request for special hours so for the Central House. Moved by Second. Mr. Ted Stone, seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, mm. unanimous, Mr. Ted Stone, ambulance fund gifts. Yeah, just real quick. Um, this is kind of the thing I always speak about. Roy Robson was a great guy. I've known I knew him for a very, very, very long time. Um, and uh, his passing is as sad as it is. It's nice to see that with his passing, the family decides to direct the, you know, in lieu of flowers, give donations to the ambulance fund. It's nice to see us uh, reap those rewards. And uh, I know that, uh, that Roy would, uh, would certainly love to see that in his name, there are people that are donating for him going to such a great cause. So thank you to the Robson family and uh, know that it's going to a great cause. And thank you to the donors. And following up on that, because I always like to state, recognize publicly the people who have been generous. And the donors are Mr. and Mrs. Artie Pine, Donald and Julia Harris, Charlotte Colella, and Don Manchester. So I would request a motion uh, to approve item three, ambulance fund gifts in a total of $230. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed. That is aye. unanimous. And in the same spirit, I wanted to acknowledge the police department gifts. And they, uh, they are generous donors of Mark Abrahams, or Abrams, I guess you pronounce it, of the Abrams Group, to the police gift account for, the, for his appreciation of allowing him to use the police department training room for classes, and from John Sutton of Boston, Mass, to the canine gift account for the purchase of a canine vest and equipment for Titan, who will be our newest member of our police force. So thank you to those generous donors. Uh, may I have a motion, please, to approve so Second. Second. That would be uh, consent agenda item four. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Oppose that issue, Ninos. Okay. Thank you. No. Youth Commission appointment. So we have two appointments to make to the Youth Commission because two of our members, uh, I think one had to resign and the other has uh, moved out of town. The Board of Selectmen will consider making appointments to the Youth Commission to fill two at-large vacancies with terms expiring June 30th, 2019 and June 30th, 2021. And applications have been received from Tracy Ferenc Caitlin Tyrrell, Lindsay Balmer, and Mina Kaushik. So, are any of the applicants here tonight? Is, uh, is Tracy here? Hi, Tracy, come up and say hello and tell us a little about yourself and why you like, I'm always hard and we have more applicants than we have positions. It's but, a good problem uh, to have, We'd love to right? hear, hear from you and, and your, your interest and your background. Yes, awesome. So thank you for having me and inviting me here. Um, I am applying, I've lived in Hopkinton, I'm Tracy Forensic, I've lived in Hopkinton for seven years, uh, live on Smith Road right now, and um, my, I have a daughter at Marathon Elementary. And I, um, I just feel called to help. You know, I want to, I sat on, in on the Youth Commission meetings as a volunteer last year, and um, just to get a feel for the issues that our youth are facing. I'm very interested and passionate about um, finding out um, what we need to do as, as a commission to help youth succeed and thrive in our town, which will ultimately carry them through thriving in their own lives as they grow up through the school system and, and grow into their own adulthood and families. Um, my background, uh, my, in my career life, my background has been in project management, team leadership, and process management. And I currently work um, part-time. I took some time off to be at home with my daughter um, in 2016 and did a lot of volunteer work in the community um, with Bay Path. And I'm starting a Girl Scouts troop as well. Um, and now I'm working part-time as a swim instructor for kids, teaching them life-saving skills and safety around the water. Um, do you guys have questions for me? No? OK. 
But the, basically, I just feel called to help and understand what the issues are um, for the youth in our town and interested in working with the commission to come up with ideas for events and things that we can do to bring awareness to any kinds of issues that they might be facing in our schools. If I may do the chair, well, I, I, I appreciate that you um, spent the last year going to many of the meetings. I, I know that you've been wanting to be on the, uh, on the Youth Commission for, for quite some time. Yes. And that's really important. A lot of times people um, apply for positions out of the blue and they know nothing about uh, the, um, the commission or committee that they that they're, uh, want to be on. And that's, it really says a lot that, that um, you've uh, put yourself out already to make Thank sure that you. you went there to see how, the, how, it, how it works and all that. Yeah. So very much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. And you didn't get scared off. I didn't get scared <laughs> off. <laughs> so yeah, I, wanna, I just want to, um, you know, officially kind of become a member and, you know, um, be on the commission as a voting member of the commission and really excited if they'll have me, so. Other questions from other board members? That's great. Okay. All right. Great. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Tracy. Thank you. Um, is Caitlin here? Hi, Caitlin. Come tell us about you a little bit. We're glad, glad you could make it. Oh, thanks for having me. <coughs> um, I moved to Hopkinton almost five years ago. I grew up in Ashland, so currently I've been volunteering for um, Ashland Youth and Family Services. My sister's the director there. Uh -huh. um, and then I got connected with the Hopkinton um, youth and Family Services through Dawn Ronan, and she mm -hmm. talked to me about this position. Um, I also volunteer, or I'm a part of the Ashland Citizens Action Committee, but I think that in addition to that, my time would be very well spent volunteering more in Hopkinton as my kids are in second and fifth grade. So I'm available now to help as much as possible through volunteering for this because I'm a stay-at-home parent, and um, my kids are both in school now, so it's something that um, I guess meets my needs and I guess the town's needs. You must be pretty dedicated to continue your work in Ashland now that you're not, now that you're not there anymore. <laughs> um, I guess I felt like I still have a connection to my town that I grew up in, mm -hmm. but I would love to connect more to Hopkinton now that I live here, so. Excellent. If I may again through the chair, you know, that, that, yeah, that's, that's great. Uh, because again, you've been involved in in, in a youth commission already, <clears throat> coming in with probably new ideas and and, and uh, new insights that um, are always great to go between towns and, and cross pollinate. Yeah. So again, this, so thank you very much. I appreciate you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do, any other questions? Uh, did you go to the Ashland Hopkinson football game this year? No. <laughs> <laughs> How could I choose? If I can build on that, if you did, where would you stand? <laughs> no, no comment. <laughs> Divided loyalties, huh? <laughs> okay. Okay. Thanks thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do we have Lindsay here? Lindsay Baumer. Hmm? Not tonight. Okay. All right. And Mina. Hi, Mina. Good evening. Welcome. Right. My name is Meena Kaushik, and I've uh, lived in Hopkinton for over 12 years now. Um, I have three boys, uh, one in college, two in high school. Um, so I, I've, uh, I have a master's of, uh, in project management from Brandeis, and I work for a New York-based company um, in life sciences and clinical trials. Um, I have also, for the last, I want to say, 10 years or so, been involved in the Boy Scout Troop 1 of Hopkinton. I'm a committee member. I do their rechartering and get involved in other programs. Um, um, I also, for four years, uh, coached the middle school robotics team. It was a parent-run team. And uh, out of four years, three years, we went to the States. So um, involved in, in a lot of youth activities, just because I have, I have my own kids. Um, I also am part of the South Asian Circle of Hopkinton, which is a not-for-profit um, organization in town. The mission is being community engagement, getting more, um, more of the community involved in Hopkinton, plus have Hopkinton benefit from the resources of the community. 
So with the uh, growth in Hopkinton, there's a lot of diversity we see. Um, I know that the Youth Commission does a lot um, with you know, existing issues and they, they, they do a fantastic job. The, the way I would bring, uh, what I would bring to the table is um, getting more programs around enrichment of youth, bringing in more, uh, more of the issues that come up with diversity to how to handle that, bring in a new perspective. Also, um, advancement for youth. Um, there's a lot of opportunities. There's, there's a lot that can be done with less resources in terms of money. I know that's always um, like a shortfall. That. <laughs> Sounds really good. <laughs> so uh, that, that's, uh, that's my, um, that's what I feel. And also I want to give back to the community. My boys are older now, so it's a little easier juggling work and home. So any, any questions for me? Well, I guess I'm the one that's, that's speaking. Thank you very much. This is this is great. You know, I I did uh, some coaching of the robotics several years ago, also, and that's that, that that was a lot of fun. Some of the things that the kids mm -hmm. could come up with were just amazing. Some really patentable things that some mm -hmm. of the kids came up with. Yes, absolutely. Yes, I would. Yeah, yeah, those are the kind of things I want to bring for a larger community, especially for girls. I see boys, it's easier to bring them in, but you know, girls in STEM is something that's very passionate to me. Mm -hmm. right. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mina. Thank, thank you. you. Th through the chair, I got a question. The Are chair. there any men on the Youth Commission? It's here. No. Oh, there is? Okay, okay, good. I just want to make sure that at least we have some, some balance and some diversity there, you know. It's, <laughs> you know it's pretty it's, sure we're not allowed to ask yeah, that I question. Yeah, I talk about that. <laughs> No, 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 it's just because we always just have women, oh, it's, moms, yeah, it's one yeah. of the things I just... Is it a young man? Is it an old man? Is it, Who is it we can't ask those questions. <laughs> no. I, just, I think I can. <laughs> All right. So who is it? I can't remember. Who's the gentleman, Don? What's that? I'm sorry? Who's the gentleman? John. Oh, oh yes. good. Okay. Sorry about that. It's okay. So this is a... The, Based on the, the resumes that we have and the 30 seconds that we had to speak to you guys, it's, it's a very hard decision for me to make. I don't, I'm going to let you guys make a motion and second it and I'll wait to see what we're voting. Uh, is there, sometimes when we have other, uh, other, t other uh, committees where there's two spots and others uh, are applying for it, we make other, we make the person that's, that either doesn't kind of willfully step back from the decision process, we make him an associate member or a junior member or non-voting member, whatever it is, liaison. Um, do we have the ability to do that in, on this? We, um, have the chair, we have the chair here. I like the chair and I don't want to put her on the spot saying, who do you oh, like? You, you no, put her on the spot. I, 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 you know, first of all, I have to say, I am so extremely excited that there was four applicants. And um, Lindsay is not here tonight because she reached out to me privately after she sent in her application. And I had explained to her tonight, my position is I have two applicants that have spent the year volunteering and really making sure that the Youth Commission is a commitment that they can make. Um, and I think you guys know we've been struggling a little bit with um, the Youth Commission growing and having the commitment be more than past people could kind of mm -hmm. willing to be able to give. So um, I had said that I would love for these other two applicants to become involved in the Youth Commission. They are welcome to our meetings. Um, we listen to them. We take their suggestions. They just can't vote. Um, and Lindsay is g going to plan to do that. Um, so Tracy and Caitlin have spent the past year Question volunteering and really having discussions with me on what the commitment level is to make sure that not only that are they passionate about it but they can dedicate the time um, that it's going to take so through the chair so is that your would that be your recommendation that would be my recommendation So we, we do feel, and you would be comfortable if you had a B team that was of associate members who could still participate. I absolutely, I encourage it. your work. Uh, yeah, I encourage it. I, I had actually asked someone, I said, I don't know if they can just appoint another seat. I hate to turn any community member away. 
Um, that's not my area of expertise, but I encourage them to, to come to our meetings, be a mm -hmm. part of it, come to MLK Day, come to Police Night Out, help us at our tables, you know. Um, mm -hmm. That's what Tracy and Caitlin did to know this is where I really want to be. Yeah, yeah. So do the chair, then, then, then let me, let's just do, let's try and split into two, two spots. I mean, two different motions if possible. I'll make a motion to accept the chair's recommendation for Tracy and Caitlin to be appointed to the two positions. There are two different terms. Two different terms, okay. One term expires in June and the other is a full term th through two, to 2021. Madam Chair, while Mr. Coutinho is sorting out his motion, can I ask a question just in general about associate members? Yes. Can we do that with the charge of the committee as it's set up today? I don't believe the charge uh, accommodates or provides for associate membership. I didn't see that myself, but again, that's not my area of expertise. But that's the charge as it is today. So if we voted to create two associate member positions on that committee tonight, that's within our role, isn't it? Yes. We don't have to post <laughs> if we're going to we're talking about youth commission appointments. I think that's plenty broad to create two associate member positions if we want to appoint some others. Mr. Kamal. I respectfully suggest that if that's the board's intent, perhaps you direct staff to revise the charge. Well, yeah, we'd get bring to that. Bring it back to the board. And I'll bring it back. Yes, yes, and, and then the appointments cannot happen tonight because the charter requires that the vacancies be posted for a certain period. Well, what we could do tonight was make the two appointments for the two open positions, but we could not make appointments to his associates. Correct. Those would have to be done at a separate time. Correct. <clears throat> so between... Okay. So I, I think that the board is, is kind of amenable to that suggestion of, of Tracy and Caitlin. Does Tracy and Caitlin have a, have a, uh, a preference on who takes which? Which position, which, which seat on the board? Does one care? Do, I don't does. I think the, the terms matter. Are you guys. We have one that's going to expire June 30 of 19 and one that's going to expire June 30 of 21. Uh, and that one can be reappointed. I was going to say, right. you just come in that for That can reappoint. be reappointed. Right. Right. So does, does anyone have a. Do you have a, a. So it doesn't make a difference? No. Great. All right, they're so going to be so, love it so much. They're going to be back for reappointment. Absolutely. So I would like to, just based on chronologically, I would like to um, move, uh, make a motion that Tracy Forensic uh, be appointed to the um, Youth Commission to fill the at-large vacancy, which will expire June 30 of 2019. Second. If if I'm, if I may, there's already a motion on the floor. So it wasn't seconded. Oh, it wasn't seconded. Right. Okay. It was out of order. Yeah. <laughs> if I may just add a different perspective, um, I think they're both great applicants. Sorry. Um, and I think we just need to sort out who goes where. Um, and, and understandably, again, there would be just a reappointment done in June, I would assume. But I do understand that. Caitlin is already serving on a board in a similar capacity, and Tracy has not. So my recommendation would be to give Tracy the full term. That's fine. But that's just, that's just my, but there's a motion on the floor, so I guess I shouldn't have even said anything. Um, that, was, that was made and seconded. Right, do you want to take a vote? Okay, the motion is to appoint, um, Tracy Forensic for a term on the Youth Commission expiring June 30th, 2019. It has been made and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. And uh, may I have a motion to appoint Caitlin Terrell to a position on the Youth Commission um, to expire on June 30th, 2021. So moved. Second. All right. All those in favor? Yeah, um, is there a question? Yes. Yes. Uh, I, I just wanted to put it out there um, 
to it will be uh, Lindsay and Mina. That I hope you both understand that we would love to have you on on the commission. Um, we just our our rules don't allow it at this time, and um, encourage you to continue to going to the meetings and and participating. I think uh, more town involvement is, uh, is something that we would all welcome. But I I plan on making a motion to start to address that as soon as we're done here. Okay. And, and, and I would like to add to Mr. Nasrullah's um, comment also, we have a very, a growing community, a growing youth community, a changing demographic. Um, I think it was at our last meeting we were addressed by the South Asian circle. Um, and so I think it's really important to have a voice from that circle, that, that new demographic within the town, to make sure that we really fully serve all our residents and we have a fuller understanding of the needs across across the spectrum of our residents so um, you know I'm really grateful Mina that you stepped forward and again Mr. Herr I, I look forward to finding a way to make that happen because I think that's an important aspect that we need to in involve in all aspects of our town government so well we appreciate you so so the motion has been made and seconded for the appointment of Caitlin Terrell to the uh, ex term expiring in 2021. Madam Chair. Mr. Kamal. Oh, yeah. Mr. Kamal, I'm sorry. Yeah, through the chair, uh, I think the vote may proceed. However, since we have the chair of the Youth Commission on TV in front of the board, can you help the public understand how they can, how they come to know that they can come and participate in your meetings? Yeah, so usually that's me just going around to town saying to everybody that I see, hey, come to a meeting and see what we're doing and follow our Facebook page. Um, the, all of our meetings are posted just like any other meeting. Um, and like I said, we really just have people sit around the table like Tracy did with us and share her ideas and um, really help us move some initiatives forward. It's just that she didn't have an official vote um, at the end of the day. So we encourage collaboration. Um, you know, we are really starting to reach out as well to the school committee um, and building principles as well because the needs are changing with the youth in the community. Um, and so how can we support all of those needs? What are we seeing that's changing, you know, that the building principles are seeing that we're not seeing. Um, so we encourage anybody that thinks that this is where they would like to put forth some of their time or volunteerism to come to a meeting, um, talk to us. It's a great group of people. Um, we're ex very excited that now the community is kind of starting to know, oh, their youth commission, you know, um, the fact that we have four applicants for two seats is, you know, pretty impressive. Um, I am so excited about new collaborations and moving forward. So I, I just, you know, we keep putting ourselves out there, um, being at the Library 101 event and, you know, police night out and the fishing derby. Um, we always have a presence at those events. Um, trying to encourage people to follow us, come to our meetings. Um, so yeah, I mean. So through the chair, I get a quick question. When and where are your meetings? So we meet at the police station, generally the second Wednesday of the month. Excellent. Excellent. But what time? 7.30. Okay, great. You just did a commercial. That's right. And anybody, I tell people to always feel free to reach out to me. You know, like Lindsay had reached out to me and said, oh my gosh, I just recognized your name. Let me ask you some questions. Um, you know, I had another mom approach me. How can our son be involved in MLK Day? Just bring him. Yeah. Let him pick what he wants to do, right? We'll, we'll fit him in. Um, so always feel welcome to reach out. And, and, and I think in issues revolving youth, we need eyes and ears. Yeah most important thing yeah mm -hmm. so we can't be there so when there's information bring it forward so excellent. absolutely okay we all ready for a vote no we already voted 
Uh, I, oh. We made oh, the motion, but oh. we did not vote. All those in favor of Caitlin Tyrrell being appointed to the term expiring 2021, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. Thank you. Thank Mr. you. Her, did you want to add, add yeah, something? Madam Chair, I move that the Board of Selectmen direct the Town Manager's Office to uh, review the Youth Commission charge and report back to the Board of Selectmen with ideas as to how we might expand membership to include associate members. So moved, seconded. seconded. All right, moved and seconded. All those please say, in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, that is also unanimous. Thank you. Don't go. go. <laughs> We're going to work you in. Oh, you may not. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank, you. Yeah. thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, election equipment approval vote. See, Connor is here. For approval and appropriation at the 2018 annual town meeting, the Board of Selectmen will consider discontinuing five AccuVote tabulators for use in elections and primaries within the town of Hopkinton, and will consider approving the use of five image cast tabulators beginning at the 2019 annual town election, May 20th, 2019. Mr. Deegan, tell us about this. I saw we voted out of uh, PAYGO last year, uh, $28,750, which is what the bill is for. That is correct. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, so essentially, the way that it works is that right now we have the money appropriated from pay as you go as you stated. And just because of the way that mass general law works in this scenario, the current equipment needs to be discontinued by the Board of Selectmen and the new equipment that's authorized by the Secretary of State's office be approved for use in an election 120 days before their use. So this puts us with plenty of time before the May election so that we'd be able to have you approve it for use in the town election in May for its first, its first use. Now I saw on the bill that it's in the exact amount that was voted, but then there's a $1,000 annual maintenance fee. Where does that come from? That comes out of my operating budget. Okay, you're gonna pay for it. Yep. <laughs> and I, I've worked, so I, we stuck actually with the same vendor that we had prior. Uh, I have to say from working with them, they're second to none when it comes to their service. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to buying the new equipment, they are already prepared to come out and offer training for all of our election officials as well as my staff on the new equipment and they will have someone there for the entire election to help staff and residents with any issues that might arise from the machines. So it's not going to change the actual election procedure. We're still using the paper ballots. This is just simply the machine that you feed your ballot into. That's correct. It's the same type of equipment where it's a uh, it's an optical scan. So you make a mark on the piece of paper, you put it through the machine. There's no network connection or anything like that. It's hardwired in, prints a receipt out at the end of the night. Not made in Florida. We're not going to find nope. ballots in the closet, anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> And that thousand dollars is not per machine. That's for the whole, the whole, all five. That's for the whole thing. Yep. The whole five. Other questions from the board? Yeah. Mr. Nazarillo. You mentioned Florida. I can't help but think of North Carolina. What's going on there now? <laughs> How do we deal with provisional ballots? So the way that provisional ballots are handled are that. So there's a, a few different things that can happen when someone comes in. If somebody comes in. They're not on our list. They can't be verified anywhere. Uh, then what we do is we allow them to vote provisionally, and then I and my staff will then, or and registrars as well, will investigate. Typically using our uh, our voter registration system as well as looking to see if they've moved or registered elsewhere through the RMV or any other agency. And there is a rule for state elections, fortunately, that you can vote up to six months after moving from your old community as long as you haven't registered to vote elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So most of the provisional ballots that I see are just people who either accidentally deleted themselves off the voter rolls or they moved and didn't register in their new community in time. And so we double check that on any of them if for some reason they were deleted but not 
listed in the new community yet, uh, and all of them are, are checked, and there's a paper trail associated with all of them. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Those aren't extra ballots sticking out of your pocket there, Connor. On there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If there are no further questions, I request a motion to discontinue the use of five Accu AccuVote tabulators for elections and primaries in Hopkinton and approve the use of five ImageCast tabulators beginning at the 2019 annual town election. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous with one uh, Mr. Cotino did not vote. So. Thank you all very okay. much. Thank you very much. Good. Okay. Hopkinton Village Center at 25 and 35 Main Street. Update. The Board of Selectmen will receive an update from Chuck Joseph regarding their proposed Hopkinton Village Center project, 25 and 35 Main Street, which includes 12 condominiums and a municipal parking lot. Mr. Joseph, welcome. Madam Chair, point of information, please. Yes, Mr. Uh, Mr. Joseph represents me uh, as a real estate broker uh, and realtor for uh, a certain piece of property in the town. Um, I spoke with town council earlier today about the matter. He uh, was fine with me continuing to uh, participate in the discussion or a discussion uh, specific to Mr. Joseph's uh, proposal. Um, I have filed a appearance of a conflict of interest form with the town clerk's office earlier and uh, do not plan on recusing myself unless the board feels otherwise. Okay, I personally don't see how this project affects your financial interests in any way, so I don't have an issue with that. Other board members? I don't see any conflict of interest. I think it's two separate matters, two separate projects, I have no issues. It doesn't require a vote of you for me to continue on, but I'd just like to gauge yep. to make sure everyone's good. All right, I'm fine, thank you. Okay. And I think we are too. As long as Chuck's fine. I'm fine. Thank you, <laughs> Chuck. Thank please. you, Madam Chairman. Thank you for taking the up, let me have the opportunity here to come and speak to you about our concept plan for the property at 2535 Main Street. Um, for those of you who've been around for a little while, you may recognize that this property had been approved for uh, a three-story, 45,000 square foot mixed-use building, retail first floor, um, offices second floor, and condominiums on the third floor. When we became involved with the property, we looked hard at that. We really looked hard at that plan. Um, we tried to incorporate in our decision-making uh, what our knowledge of the town, where we feel the town is, what we feel this downtown area is, and we decided to move in a different direction. Uh, that direction being a much less dense use of the property, uh, uh, residential use of the property, <coughs> not a commercial use of the property. As such, um, and I had been in contact with Elaine and Norman for years about down, everybody has been talking about how we're going to deal with parking and so on and so forth. So through our concept plan, we were able, and I, I just want to check to see if you folks have seen the physical plan. Mm -hmm. I have hard copies if you want to just distribute them uh, to the. Was it in our packet? Is it on the screen? Yeah, when you say hard, when you say the plan, that. meaning the, the site plan. The site plan. Yeah, we've seen yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. You have seen the site plan. Yeah. Okay, great. So um, the, 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 the concept is actually pretty simple. Um, we are proposing to build six buildings, two units per building, 12 condominiums on the, on the parcel. Immediately behind the buildings, we are proposing to put in a, what on first go around from an engineering standpoint, uh, we believe we can get 32 parking spaces um, behind those buildings. On the sides of the buildings, we will then construct parking for the use of those two uh, commercial buildings that are there. They will be separate from the municipal lot. Currently, there are three driveway cuts onto Main Street there, uh, one between the buildings, one on each end of the building. Our, and, I, and I have to stress that this is a concept plan at this point, but it, it, it has been, this is our third iteration here, so we kind of worked it through as best we can, we believe. Uh, we're eliminating that middle driveway, and there will be a lighted walkway at that 
position coming down to Main Street between the two buildings from the municipal lot. The reason that I'm here today is to seek the um, approval and support of the Board of Selectmen before we continue to expend money on planning. Um, my belief is that uh, we, you, if we are requesting funds from you that you may have to bring this to town meeting, we understand that no one can predict town meeting, but uh, it would be helpful for us to know if we have the support of the, of the Board of Selectmen. Um, the cost for the parking lot to the town of Hopkinton, and I, again, I'm, I'm hedging here a little bit because we don't have final engineering plans, would be in the $500,000 area. That is our construction cost, straight up, our construction cost for those pieces of the engineering and the site work that would be related to the parking lot, the sidewalk and lighting, et cetera. So we would be seeking that support from town meeting um, in May if, if, if we get that far with planning board. So that's kind of the gist of it. It's a little bit of a um, unusual public-private co-venture. Uh, however, recently I have been involved in a similar co-venture with the Hopkins Center for the Arts, and um, I, I think that's an amazing piece of work that uh, a lot of people in our government and in the private sector got together and made happen, and I think this is something that could be beneficial to the community. Mr. Herr? So you mentioned um, $500,000 to construct the parking area, correct? Yes. That does not include the town purchasing that land. The land would be, quote, gifted to the town, end That's quote? Correct. We're gifting the land. This is the construction cost. So this is purely the construction cost. Is there any margin in that number? Would there be any margin when we get to that point, or would there be an open book on the cost side? Um, we, can, we can have an open book on that. Our belief is right now that we can value engineer that a little bit more sure. that's why i don't want to put that number publicly as but a the number concept of we're not going to no one's going to profit from us building this absolutely not lot. and there's no profit to us in this we are looking to cover the cost of that parking lot got it thank you other questions mr Cotino? well parking something i've been i've been asking to go on the agenda for just about uh, every month for the last three four Five years, I we guess. We are aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I totally appreciate uh, in, any time um, we, can, uh, we can get some parking to, to um, further invigorate downtown because uh, you know, we have businesses just starting up and then with the downtown corridor project coming up, we really need some um, uh, plan Bs for, uh, uh, for the businesses downtown to, to continue to flourish. Um, it uh, conceptually, it seems uh, it, it it seems to work. It's a, it just starts. Mr. Nasrallah, um, I think it's a fabulous idea that uh, you know, private parties are stepping forward to try to alleviate some of the issues that the town is uh, experiencing. Um, as a concept, I like the idea. I think obviously the devil's in the details, but mm -hmm. um, as a concept, I think this looks fantastic and. Uh, <coughs> lend you for for foregoing another project uh, in favor of something that's going to benefit the town entire you know as a whole thank you that's John. so I've known Chuck for going on 40 years now um, and Chuck's done a lot of great things for the town um, he's partnered with uh, you know the cult the, the Center for the Arts he's done you know, real estate for, he's brought a lot of people into town. He's, he's, he's done a lot of good things for the town. And um, the fact that he's a developer that lives in town, that has lived in town, that I'm assuming is planning on staying in town, I don't think that he would want to um, try to, I don't want to bring up other names of developers that are not as forthright as, as someone like you. but. I find you to be very forthright, and I've, I've found that to be consistent over the last 40 years. Um, I don't know about the $500,000. I don't know how the town would feel about that. Um, I generally like the concept of, uh, of getting the parking downtown. I love the, the um, you know, revitalizing those two lots to make it a, uh, to, to make it a, a more vibrant downtown and, and to improve possibly what the streetscape would look like. So. Uh, I would say that I am 
at this point in favor of uh, exploring it more. Well, I don't mean to be the contrarian, but I do have a couple observations and a couple questions. Um, Hopkinton's experienced a lot of growth. Um, I don't know, I know downtown is hot. I don't know that as a town, I feel we need a lot more residential right now. Um, this is one of the few areas in our business zone that is available. The original plan that Ron Rue had allowed for some retail and there aren't a lot of options for added retail in the downtown. Um, West Main Street, for all they say that, you know, brick and mortar isn't selling, that place is hopping. Um, and we do want to find ways to bring business into downtown and revitalize the downtown. So, you know, off the top, I would say I am disappointed, uh, you know, the residential sells. From a standpoint of developer, the residential sells. Um, I have to say I am disappointed to see the retail abandoned and the strictly be residential because I know from a standpoint of a developer, yeah, you can sell it. Um, but we don't have a lot of options to bring more things into the downtown and this is one piece of land we could do that. So I, I'm interested to hear what your thinking was um, in abandoning the retail component because back in the day that that was an attractive component and I think it still is. Sure. Um, well, that's a surprise. Um, I'm, I didn't expect to hear people saying we'd like to bring more commercial, more dense population in the downtown area. However, um, in, a, in an attempt to answer your question, the building that was approved there was, if you're familiar with South Street and you're familiar with 22 South Street, the building in the Price Chopper Plaza, that is two thirds the size of the building that was approved there. Mm -hmm. 45,000 square feet in that space, I believe, would cause some significant traffic issues in downtown that would be difficult to alleviate given the width of Main Street. Um, we looked hard at that and we, didn't, we just didn't see it happening. There is not, uh, if you look at the downtown area, it's almost as if the functional commercial development has shifted to the 495 interchange and the more cultural social element is downtown. And I think that's what um, we were looking at when this was going to happen. We are not Wellesley. We don't have all these commercial buildings along mm -hmm. the sides of the streets, et cetera. Our downtown will be limited in how much commercial development can occur there. Being in the uh, business of real estate and in the commercial um, part of it as well, uh, there, is, uh, there is some real warning signs out there about commercial development and what can go into these small spaces and who would go in there. Um, I do recognize that we do not have a lot of commercial space in Hopkinton, um, and I feel that uh, that particular location is not, would, would have some challenges in terms of leasing in a commercial sense. And I think that 12 units is the appropriate scale mm -hmm. for downtown. I think it keeps us as a New England town, um, and I think the commercial development will occur along the streets. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess my, my other concern here is, um, you know, when, again, looking back to Ron Rue's Hopkinton Village that he did, and he worked extensively with the Historic District Commission because these are centerpiece properties in the district and making very sure that everything occurred in the back, I remember him doing a balloon test and all kinds of stuff to see that the, there was not a detrimental visual impact to the streetscape of those two very significant, we call them the mansion houses, uh, in downtown. Um, we also have town bylaws that discourage, if not prohibit, putting parking lots in the front of a structure, we want them in the back for the very reason that there is a very strong impact to the streetscape, even if it's not in the historic district, when you are faced with a parking lot. It's not, it's not a pretty sight, and that's why we have that in the town, and that's compounded by this being a centerpiece property in the district. So, you know, where that parking lot is located and what, you, what it would do from the streetscape, um, I don't, I don't particularly like what I'm seeing. 
Um, and then I would add, and this has nothing to do with you, Chuck, but as a general comment on parking, um, and I've been, I've been playing this tune for a while now. Um, we keep talking about needing parking, parking, parking downtown. And when I come through the downtown on a, on a peak time, like a Friday night, when I'm glad Central House is doing great and there's something at the library and the downtown is packed, but all the spaces up by the Common and the Korean Church are open. All the spaces right across the street, going up Main Street, the extra spaces we put in by the police station, up past Phipps, they're all empty. There's, there are spaces. And I'm afraid to say that human nature being what it is, at least in Hopkinton, <laughs> if somebody can't find a space right in front, they say there's no parking. But I have seen this week after week that there's a lot of parking and, um, and I, you know, I fear that, for instance, alleviating the town hall issue and, and you know, being fair to our neighbor that owns some of that land and back, or land that we use now, um, if there's a lot across the street, they're still gonna park in back at town hall. I just, that's the way it is. I don't think, I, I am not comfortable with half a million dollars for a lot that I think is not going to be used as a municipal lot and alleviate the situation that we have right now with town hall parking. And, and that's just my, con my feeling, but it is what I've been observing from just the way people use the parking or, or don't use the parking. And, and that's not you, that's sure. not you, no, it's just I what I'm seeing. I I'm very that. skeptical. Um, however, I, I do want to say that you know, the parking lots that are downtown are all privately owned and the need that I've heard from government officials and that we've been talking about for years is the town needs to control mm -hmm. a certain parcel of land. Yep. And this was one of the few that was remaining mm -hmm. where it could be under town control. Yep. Um, certainly your concerns about parking, that all has to be taken up with the Historic Commission and with the planning boards and in the appropriate time frame, we will go through that process. Um, I do believe that there is a need for parking downtown, especially if we are gonna take that maybe final step and find those other commercial areas that are going to be developed uh, will be squeezed more for that. And I think that this takes some of the pressure off that. That has been the crux of the conversations I have had for maybe 10 years with people is mm -hmm. how are we going to be able to address this. So um, I'm not sure that I agree that people would not use the parking lot. Um, I, I think it would be well used. I think it would serve the town very well. and. Uh, that's why I'm here, it's just yeah. to find out whether or not the Board sure. of Selectmen sure. are in favor yeah. of a plan like this. Yeah. If not, we yeah. can certainly go back and revise it. I mean, I'm just speaking to human nature mm -hmm. that, you know, we have had an agreement with St. John's Church to use that for overflow parking. I don't think anybody does. You know, until I see all these empty parking spaces filled, I won't. <laughs> You know, you we, we can own it. Though, I mean, we can we own it, but we can't assume that we're going to have the same it. cars parking here ten years from now that we have today. Mm -hmm. The town of Hockington is growing. It's one of the fastest yeah. growing towns in Massachusetts, if not New England. We need more parking downtown. I get the one the one rap I hear about the library, of all things, is ah, I was going to go over, I couldn't park, I kept going. It, they so, couldn't park in front. They could park up at the common, but they didn't. Well, whatever. The concept of parking in Hopkinton and municipal parking in particular has never been addressed, and we need to address it. If I may, through the chair, and one of the one of the main um, rule breakers in the in, in the downtown is this building. This building mm -hmm. has no parking. But look, do we have four spaces? Do we have four spaces? Yeah, we have four spaces. Now, no planning board would ever allow this building to exist to go in through site mm -hmm. plan review. And you, you were on the planning board a very long time. Mm -hmm. And so this building absolutely needs some parking. Wherever we get it, we have to somehow get some land, secure it, and, and get to downtown some parking. You know, and then because we, we have a lot of storefronts and, and, and small restaurants that, that um, are doing very, very well. You know, they, they met all the parking requirements. However, didn't figure in the, the people that were, that were willing to do a 45 minute wait. Mm -hmm. And we have to make sure that, that we strike while these businesses are still viable because if people can't find spaces, they will go other places. 
So we should really have to work as hard as we can um, to uh, with the business community and, and do what we can as a as, as a municipality to support both the, both the town hall and and uh, and, the, and the businesses. Chuck, are, are both of these two buildings that you're building 100% residential? The two buildings up front? Yeah. No, those are commercial. Okay. Uh, PLM is in their power line management. Pete Talman and Charlie Morrison. Okay. I'd like to echo what Brian said. I think we need to look to the future. I think, um, you know, as we go through our Main Street corridor project, uh, the idea is to attract more business, to attract more amenities, more places to go and make it a destination. While I don't disagree with you, Claire, that I've always found parking, I found parking right in front today. Um, as the town grows and as, uh, as more businesses come in, which we hope to do, um, I think we should, we should have a plan in effect uh, to accommodate those people that we, we hope to bring. I just, just want to say as an anecdote, um, I was involved with Greg Major quite a bit in trying to get that restaurant leased for two and a half years. And one of the primary um, objections we got from potential restaurant owners was there's not enough parking here. And so we can hypothesize all we want here, but if the business community looks and says there's not enough parking, they're not coming. So if we don't have enough parking in downtown, and I've heard that echoed by people for years now, um, and we have an opportunity to get land, quote, for free, and yeah, we got to pay to build a parking lot. Well, we'd have to pay to build a parking lot if we went and bought land somewhere else ourselves, right? So instead of spending 500 grand, we'd spend a million or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, here's an opportunity, and I don't know what the numbers are, and I don't want to get into the numbers too deep. The concept of land being gifted to coordinate and support some development to create public parking conceptually is something that I think the board should embrace and support exploring. That doesn't mean we're going to do it. It doesn't mean we're going to sign the HCA today. But the concept, I think, is an excellent concept. Well, I would certainly like the town to look into building costs for a parking lot to get a sense of, you know, where this number is. Well, that's why I said I want to see, you know, it would have to be an open book. If, we, if we're going to do a deal, it's got to be an open deal. We fully understand that, and we're very confident that when we come forward with our numbers, once we have our final engineering done, we would share those openly with you. Uh, I, I think that's been clear in our intent that this is what we're trying to accomplish here. Um, I think it's a, it's, it is a challenging site in that one has to control all the water coming off that site right now. And that, that's part of our infrastructure, is being able to do all that. We're trying to do this, by the way, ahead of the downtown corridor project, because that's going to require a lot of coordination with us with infrastructure and tying into that. So that's one of the reasons we're out here now saying, OK, let's make sure we get this all on the, out in the front, in the front of that project. So do we need a? A motion on this or is it just strictly a an FYI that's come before us well the challenge for us as you can imagine is we will now start to have to put some serious money into engineering and if we're going to start getting in front of the planning board and there's a risk for us I mean there's a big risk and the risk is town meeting says now we don't want to do it and we've spent all this money up front we would probably then go back and just re-engineer a different project with no parking lot but um, what we're hoping and what we were hoping coming into this meeting is that we would have the support of the Board of Selectmen saying that if we go to town meeting with this, obviously we've got a million hurdles to go through with planning and all that stuff, but if that all works out, that the Board of Selectmen see this as a positive project that they would support at town meeting. And if they don't, they don't. Is it your goal to have it in front of town meeting this year? Yes. It, it strikes me that this is very, very preliminary, and, and I don't know. Are we comfortable making some kind of a, a commitment on just this very rough concept plan to the point that this is something that goes to town meeting? Mr. Kamala, do you think this is an appropriate thing to do, or is it better just to give an informal opinion as we have been? Um, through the chair. Perhaps Chuck, here's the question. If this was to be presented at town meeting, mm -hmm. the request will be for 
what? In my mind, I'm thinking the acquisition of land and the capital investment in the parking lot. The Is there anything else? Be, don't be too No, I, I think that we're, we're seeking legal advice on this as well as to how to structure this. It may be that it is best to structure it as a permanent easement to the town for the parking spaces for ad infinitum, um, and the town would reimburse the developers for the construction of the parking lot, the construction cost, no land acquisition cost. So at this point, just talking conceptually, mm. what are you asking the board to support? The concept. I'm not asking them to. We don't, I haven't put numbers in front of you. I haven't got that <laughs> level of detail. I'm trying to figure out from our standpoint, put yourself in this chair. You're trying to figure out should you go forward and invest a lot of money in something if the planning board is going to, um, excuse me, if the board of selectmen is going to come back and say, we don't support this project. Well, that would have been a silly thing to do. I at least need 11 by 17. Hmm? I need at least 11 by 7. I, right I was doubling up my glasses <laughs> to see some to see some of the uh, codes you had in there. I'll take one of those. Sure. One of the larger ones so I can yeah. get a view of that. I kept waiting to get off camera to, to put double glasses on. <laughs> oh, I, I guess I, I would, oh, okay. If it was going down there? Okay. Um, I would add it, it's too early to submit an application to the Historic District Commission because you don't have a firm plan. But at the same time, this is a major impact on two significant district properties, which would clearly call for an application and need for a certificate of appropriateness to do the, for this kind of an impact on two district properties. Mm -hmm. um, and that requires a plan and it requires a public hearing process, right. which would certainly be held. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, y you would probably do well to <laughs> talk to them and they, they can't give you a, a, a thumbs up or a thumbs down because they would have to be an application in front of them. But that's a piece of the process and that, that's a significant piece well, of the I'm process. I'm aware of that. I'm aware of that piece, Madam Chairman, and we are fully prepared to do that. We, I, I want to reiterate, this is a concept plan. This is not, not even so much about the drawings as it is about the concept. This is a public-private partnership where the town benefits by getting a parking lot in the central district, a few doors down from the library, across the street from town hall, and uh, w w if, if the town doesn't see this as a viable alternative, that's fine. So I think we could put a motion together tonight mm -hmm. that speaks to the board's um, interest in learning more, that speaks to the board's support of a concept of a private-public partnership to establish a municipal parking lot, mm -hmm. and speaks to uh, the transparency that would obviously have to be given it's a public process Absolutely. now, not just a private venture. Um, and that doesn't paint us into any corner. Yeah, it I doesn't say to. we're going to challenge the historic commissioner, we're going to challenge the planning board or anybody else. It just says either we are interested in those three things I listed or we're not. Um, and I think that would that I yes. think that's going to give you a clear indication. I can tell you what the vote's going to be already, mm -hmm. but I can tell you, give you a clear indication of where the board is headed with the idea, not with the, the details, not with the number of spaces and not with the impact on those two homes and not with traffic flow and all that other stuff, right? right. That all has to get sorted out. But the concept yep. of a public-private partnership to establish more parking in downtown Hopkinton, I am extremely comfortable voting. If Mr. Kamala. In, in terms of the concept plan, I'm based on past experience, the board is, may consider looking into exploring the opportunity for a public private partnership. With the end goal of a public private partnership to, en to enhance pa parking in downtown Hopkinton. I'm, I'm fine with exploring the opportunity to. Uh, establish additional parking in downtown Hopkinton through a public-private partnership as proposed by Mr. Joseph December 18, 2018. So I guess conceptually when I look at it, it in, the, in the limited 
interest that I've had. The fact that he's going to believe he's going to probably build this project regardless. Um, the fact that it's going to be an open book where we can review everything as far as costs. Mm -hmm. And the, the, it, it, I don't conceptually, I see it as a win-win where we're, like Mr. Catino said, we're going to get how many spaces? It's 32. 20, 32. So 32 spaces at whatever the construction cost is, that if we found another piece of property in town that we were going to get 32 it's going to be the same. pieces, it's going to be the same thing plus the acquisition cost of the land. So it's inevitably, it's, it's kind of a, to me, and maybe I'm missing something significant on here, but for me, uh, I look at it as I can't speak for the ta for the taxpayers. I don't know if they're going to say, "Yeah, sure, 500 grand is great," uh, or you're going to get voted out. I don't know mm -hmm. one way or the other. But as a selectman, for the looking at like for the betterment of the town, to see that it's going to be a, a minus the construction costs, a net zero to us. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I, I don't know how we could uh, not support it. But again, one person, one board member here. That's all. Hey, I, to the chair, I've, I've already spoken. Um, you know, I just, uh, I want to try and find as many parking spaces for downtown as possible, because that's, that's the only way, that's the only place where we can have any growth at all. Um, you know, we, we, we talk about the, the small area that we have as a retail district right now. But, um, you know, if we do that, we might be able to grow our retail district. Mm -hmm. You know, s some of these, uh, some of these uh, empty storefronts now could get filled. And, and again, town hall employees would actually have a place to park. Mm -hmm. um, and wouldn't have to, wouldn't have to in, in, in a snowstorm, uh, um, walk all the way up to St. John's. You know, it, 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 it just doesn't sound right that um, we have a municipal building that we rent space from the local church so the employees can park. No other building, no, no other project would be allowed to exist, um, having to rent space from, from a local church in order to keep their business up. Um, so um, uh, I'm for, for doing, for, 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 for a, this concept, let's put it that way. So can we, if we're going to make a motion, can we make a motion and move on? Yeah, that's true. We are really late. Or not. So I move that the Board of Selectmen um, explore, support the idea, support the idea of exploring a public-private par partnership with, what's the entity? Hopkinton Hopkin Village, and Village Center. Hopkinton Village, Village Center to take out if I'm repeating words here, Norman, please, to, uh, to, to create a public-private partnership that results in a public, public access parking lot uh, in the area proposed this evening, something like that, mm -hmm. <laughs> to explore the idea of looking into this but that we support it. We support the idea of exploring, the, exploring this. You got to go to the banks and say, I got preliminary interest and stuff like that, right? So yep. the vote helps you go to the bank to get if, that. If, if I may uh, uh, add to, I want to go back to what your original amendment without, without making sure that we're not stepping on the planning board or, uh, or historic district. Yeah, assuming we're going to follow yeah. the normal yeah. development exactly. process yes. in Hopkins. You can put sure that in the motion that, that we would obviously support following the normal development process in Hopkinton. But the concept of increasing our, with the end goal of increasing our parking in downtown Hopkins. Second. Do we have enough? Yeah, we probably to should call it a motion. motion is. <laughs> Elaine, do you have something you can Thinking put words here. to? Something like um, that's a <laughs> like. Uh, support the idea of exploring a public private partnership regarding Hopkinton Village Center that results in a public access parking lot in the area of the United Assuming that the normal development That is my motion. And that is my second. Well, I will support 
this motion on the basis of I think it's always good to get more information. Never hurts to get information. I, as I've stated before, I have a lot of reservations, but we're not voting on this plan or supporting this plan or making commitment. We are simply voting tonight to gather more information. Is that correct? So no, I would disagree. I think the motion says we're voting to support the concept of a public-private partnership to expand parking in downtown Hopkinton. Gathering information is part we're of that. Exploring we're, 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 we're exploring it. We're exploring We're supporting the idea of supporting his development if it's a public-private partnership. It's not just, this, we're not saying we're not interested. We are interested. And we are saying, let's find some more out through the normal development process if this can work for the town or not. We're, we're confirming an interest, but we're not making any commitment. We're simply confirming an interest. No commitment, but absolute interest. You are right with that, Mr. Mr. Kamala. Yes, here's what I'm hearing. Uh, the board supports the opportunity to explore the public-private partnership that will result in a parking lot that is available to the public. Mm -hmm. uh, and that process in itself, I think, as we know, uh, it, it has multiple stages. Yes, it does. Yeah, it has multiple stages, uh -huh. uh, beginning with at least defining what this public-private private partnership is, and also defining what this public parking lot is going to be like, mm -hmm. uh, and also defining what the if, if this was uh, moved forward, uh, what would be the process uh, that the developer will follow uh, relative to getting the, the, the project approved by the town? And also, uh, importantly, identifying in terms of what is happening in the maintenance of this. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Madam Chair, if I could ask. Mr. Her, yes, please. Joseph, does this motion work for what you're looking for? Um, it's a little squishy, it's probably. It's a little squishy. It's a little more tepid than I had hoped for, but it is what it is, you know? So uh, we'll work with this and make our financial decisions on moving forward. Okay. Mrs. Lazarus, will you read that one more time so we know what we're voting on? <laughs> Assuming that the normal development process will be followed, but the end goal is to increase parking downtown. Okay. I believe that motion was made and seconded. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed? Okay, that is unanimous. Thank you. Thanks, Chuck. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you very much. Okay. Annual license renewals. This is a continued uh, from the previous meeting. The Board of Selectmen will continue renewing or approving active business licenses in the town of Hopkinton, including all alcohol, common vigilar, class one and class two, livery limousine licenses, entertainment and municipal street license for the calendar year 2019. Um, we approved a lot of them last last meeting and there were several that were outstanding with inspections or with application fees um, I believe since that time there were a lot of inspections done today and some of the fees came in um, yeah, madam chair yeah can we can we check with the uh, yes yes yeah. that's what I oh, was about beautiful. to do can Thank you please you. update us where we stand I think there's an update even from the list that was sent to us in our packet oh this one in the packet too there's a new one it was on the table oh uh, thank you it says updated you December 18 so See, I knew the ones that were outstanding. Let's see, Woodville Ron and Ga Gun is now okay. Um, Bill's what pizza. else was outstanding? Looking, looking Zio's is good. Zio's looks like everything good. has no contingency. Oh my gosh, this is great. Zio's is all set, no application fee, that's all done. 
Okay. The, the whole uh, the whole list. Is that everything is done. Good job, Mo uh, Maria. Uh, Ms. Lazarus. I think that Maria. Ms. Lazarus. Maria. Maria, probably. And oh, Mr. Barn. Mr. Kamalo, your staff. Thank you. Born. We're all set. We're all yes. Set. Uh, based on the uh, list shared with you uh, tonight. Okay. Uh, all issues that were identified previously have been addressed, and there are no contingencies. Excellent. Okay. Again, it goes without saying, with much gratitude and uh, compliments to the inspection teams, uh, as well as uh, Maria Clean and Elaine Lazarus. Absolutely. Uh, office. Excellent. Thank you, Chief. Okay. In that case, um, so unless there are questions, I think we can vote these in two groups. Yeah, the Madam alcoholic. Chair. Ma Madam Chair, I'll, I'll make a motion to accept all those with no contingencies from MGL Chapter 138-12, All Alcoholic Beverages. And let me read off who those are. That is Bill's Pizzeria, the Woodville Rod and Gun Club, Inc., Zio's Quattro Incorporated, and Co. Restaurant. Second. All right. Motion made and seconded to approve licenses for those four oper um, four entities. Could you read those again, please? Okay. This is a uh, Mass General Law Chapter 138, Section 12, name, All yeah. Alcohol, Bill's Pizzeria, Woodville Rod and Gun, Zio's Quattro, and Co. Restaurant. Okay. Any questions? Okay. That motion has been made and seconded. Yes. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. And the other grouping is for common visualer under Mass General Law, Chapter 140, Section 2. I'll make a motion to accept all the common visual licenses under MGL, Chapter 140, Subsection 2. Uh, I'll, I'll read them for you. Yes, please. It was Pizza Hopio Incorporated. Uh, Bittersweet Company, Marathon Pizza, Red Barn Coffee at Angel's Cafe. That's it. So uh, I would like to break out uh, A on that list, please. Okay, then uh, let us, do, well, that wasn't seconded. So do you want to amend that motion for items B through E only? Or do you want to break it out and just have a discussion first? Um, Let, let's vote those. Let's okay. vote that group. All right. So we're going to, I'll second the motion that doesn't include the first item that was broken out. Okay. We're going to be voting on Hopio, Bittersweet, Marathon Pizza, and Red Barn. You seconded that. Please. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed? That is unanimous. Um, can we just do the, the individual license for purchase of motor vehicles and then come back to that? Is that all right, Mr. Kamala? Take, jump around or if we should figure, finish this section? That's fine. I'll make a motion to um, uh, license uh, Bulldog Fire Apparatus under MGL Chapter 140, 59, license and purchase of motor, sale of motor vehicles. Okay, made and seconded for Bulldog Fire Apparatus. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. Okay, and let's go back. Um, Mr. Ted Stone, you wanted to have further discussion on Hill's Pizza, the um, common visualer entertainment to include one television. Yeah, I don't support that license. Madam Chair, I move that the board has approved the license for Hiller's Pizza as stipulated in the documents this evening. Second. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed? Nope. Okay. Four yes, one no. That passes. Okay. Mr. Deason is not here anymore. 2019 seasonal population increase estimation. The Board of Selectmen will consider approving and signing the 2019 seasonal population increase estimation form requested by the Alcoholic Beverages Control Commission. 
So we are. Do we have a number that we are estimating? Can you explain what is meant by seasonal? We're not really a vacation community. Is this just for? Does that mean the year? What does that mean? Seasonal. Uh, this is a statutory requirement. It identifies the period as stretching from spring until fall. Okay. Yeah. That's what everyone leaves. That's what everyone leaves. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Hopkinton may. Doesn't work for be, us. It may not be a traditional. Um, Talk about parking in Maine. Seasonal town. How, however, I think in, in, in the past, based on the 2010 U.S. Census, we've identified um, a process for at least projecting the population for that period. Okay. Excellent. So what is the number that we are being requested to fill in as our estimated population? Yes. Um, it, the number is 15,048. 15,048. Okay. And this is based on the 2010 U.S. Census indicating that there are 41 seasonal housing units. And the average household size in Hopkinton is 2.99 people. Therefore, we estimate that the town's population increases by 123 people. Hmm. Huh. Okay. Like Nantucket, but different. <laughs> so do we oh, have to make a motion to accept your number? Please. So, Madam Chair, I'd, I'd like to make a motion that we accept the season population, seasonal population estimate of 15,048 for the town of Hopkinton. Second. Mr. Madam Mr. Chair, if I could yes. please. So, Mr. Kamal, these numbers that you're reading to us, you and Connor concur on these? Or, or Connor and others concur on these? Okay, thank you. Okay, so this is under the authority contained in Master and Law, Chapter 138, Section 17. meeting held on Tuesday, December 18, 2018, estimated the temporary increased resident population of Hopkinton, Mass. as of June 10, 2019 will be 15,048. Okay, that was made by Mr. Gatino, was it? I seconded? seconded. You seconded, seconded it, Mr. Yeah. Tedstone. Okay. <coughs> Made and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. Okay. Ah, annual 2019, annual town meeting action. The Board of Selectmen will vote to open the annual town meeting warrant on or before January 4th, 2019. The annual town meeting warrant will close on February 5th, 2019. The Board of Selectmen will discuss its own annual town meeting articles, including any general bylaw changes. So, um, first order of business will be, um, I request a motion to open the 2019 annual town meeting warrant on, must be any date on or before January 4th. What do we want to put in? January 4th. January 4th. Okay, open the town meeting warrant on January 4th and to close the annual town meeting warrant on February 5th, 2019. So moved. Second, is there a second? Second. All right, moved by Mr. Tedstone, seconded by Mr. <coughs> Gattino. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, that is unanimous. Annual town meeting articles. What do we have? Anything right now? I threw the chair. Um, you may recall that during the discussion of the Greyhound matter, there were several comments that we received from town council re suggesting uh, possible revisions to our recently approved uh, and amended uh, uh, animal uh, control bylaw. Okay. So the suggestion is that perhaps you instruct staff to look into that opportunity. Excellent. Are there other items that appear to some of the board members that we might want to discuss? Mm 
Nothing. Uh, yeah, we're still working on stuff coming up from With from Zach. Zach. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. We we we're meeting on Thursday again, and um, and then that's when we need a lot of help from Elaine to explain how how we can try and get some of this stuff up to us, or if it's uh, or if it's ready for this year, it might have to be in next year. So from my perspective, uh, I'm glad there's silence at the table right now. Yeah. Um, having been around for a while and we have driven so many things through town meeting over the last 10 15 years including land acquisitions and new buildings and new this and new that and uh, all kinds of capital projects uh, bylaw changes you name it a lot's gone on uh, the, the the silence i think is is, is good right now the charter the review charter <laughs> review yeah i think the dust settle i think it's we're, we're all just kind of taking a deep breath here as we move through this sort of quote boom and clean up some odd and odds and ends but I, I like the idea of a quiet town meeting not to disappoint you <laughs> <laughs> mr nesrilla do you have something we should know about i just i'm just wondering um with the trails uh committee that we're going to be talking about in january <clears throat> and any is there any kind of um delegation that would require town meeting approval at this point I don't believe so nothing with trash or trees <laughs> <laughs> there's trails hopefully not trails trash and trees <laughs> your favorite three I like them it's just throwing okay. well this isn't the end meeting the warrants going to be open for a while so we can bring this up in another meeting and I suspect you know, that'll be on the agenda as an opportunity to mention. So quiet, all quiet in the Western Front for now, but it doesn't have to stay that way. Okay, we'll take it for now. Fine. Then moving along, we have the town manager's report. Mr. Kamalo, and I believe there's a FY20 budget update. What have you got for us tonight? Yeah, um quick update on, on the budget. Part of the budget message um, instructed the town manager to have a three-way meeting with the appropriations committee chair, school committee chair, as well as the board of selectmen chair. I want to share with the board that those meetings are going well. We're exchanging information uh, so far. Uh, all town departments are working hard at uh, compiling their budgets. We may have a clear indication as to where the numbers are uh, perhaps by the the end of the calendar year. Okay, and then moving on um, through email, I have shared with the board the contact that the town manager's office has made with Lichen Bioscience. Lichen spelled L Y K A N. Uh, through those conversations, uh, we then received on December 13th a formal letter of intent from Lycan Bioscience to apply for a TIF as well as a personal property tax exemption. Um, by way of introduction, uh, Lycan Bioscience is an engineering manufacturer of cell and gene therapies. Um, in our conversations, uh, they have pitched the company as uh, planning to lead the way in manufacturing uh, clinical products to provide immunotherapy treatments for cancer and other illnesses. Um, they believe that uh, immunotherapy is on the cutting edge of treatments that are less invasive and less expensive than the traditional cancer therapies. And therefore, they, they believe that their approach uh, offers uh, better patient safety. Uh, the company plans to provide its products directly uh, to the hospitals and global pharmaceutical manufacturers. And again, in our conversations, they're saying all of this is, is innovative. They're in the forefront, they're in the cutting edge. Um, and the, 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 as a result, the company is expected 
um, is expecting an increase in the demand for its products and therefore is, uh, is, is in the process of identifying a location for its manufacturing operations. Uh, and thankfully uh, for us, uh, the individuals who lead this company have had a long-standing relationship with the owners of uh, 97 South Street. As we know, this is the former location for Lonza, uh, already fitted for this uh, kind of work. Um, the proposed project consists of leasing space uh, from the property owner. Uh, this is around 63,000 square feet. Uh, to be used for manufacturing, as I said earlier. Uh, estimated investment is around $12 million, uh, of which $10 million will be for hard and soft costs, and then the $2 million will be for personal property. Uh, in connection with this proposed plan, the company uh, has told us that they are projecting to uh, create 125 new permanent full-time uh, positions over a five-year period here in Hopkinton. Mm. Um, again, um, this is this is how far our conversations have 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 have, have gone. Uh, at this point, they have provided a formal letter of intent, uh, and therefore, what I'm looking for today from the board is twofold: one, an indication as to whether you'd like us to continue to explore this opportunity, and then two. What the company has told me is that they have a very tight deadline to make business decisions regarding their future location. Um, they are trying to also uh, get into the mass uh, office of business development schedule for approving TIFs, which therefore would entail, would entail the town considering scheduling a special town meeting in mid-February. Mm. So again, my request tonight is twofold. One, um, to receive some indication from the board as to whether you'd like us to continue to explore this opportunity. And two, uh, receive some indication from the board whether the board would be inclined to consider exploring uh, scheduling a special town meeting in February. So, if I may. Mr. Chadstone. I'm in favor of you exploring anything that's going to benefit the town of Hopkinton as a rule. Um, I don't know if there, I, I know that sometimes locally and nationally people have been given um, some, some exceptions and, and some waivers and, and allowances and then they just kind of pack up and go. Is there anything that if, if we were to, to give any of these allowances, um, is there anything that would um, allow us to recoup any of these things if they don't stay for the allotted amount of time? Um, in fact, um, Mr. Hay, I try to remember if Ms. Cochin was on the board too. Um, I'm, I'm pleased to say that uh, Hopkinton's experience has been somewhat positive. Uh, one of the major projects that we worked on was uh, uh, going after Barry Controls, uh, who had absconded on a tip and the town was able to recoup. Mm. It's Texas, so yeah. that was a successful experience. And then in the most recent uh, TIF uh, agreements, the town has emphasized, one, getting clear clawback clauses into the TIF agreement. Mm -hmm. And then number two, uh, basing the TIF relief uh, on past year's experience, i.e. perform this year, based on your performance, we'll reward you oh. for that year. Yeah. Good idea. So and th these are good concepts that the town has employed in the past, and uh, again, the Berry Controls example is, uh, I think, indicative of how strongly the town feels um, mm -hmm. about uh, uh, any company that may be misleading the community. Mm -hmm. were, were we able to get some of the Lanza TIF money back too? Uh, Lanza, no because of how the TIF was, was, was arranged. Mm. It was a slightly different TIF from the one that we signed with Pekinem. Okay. So we're learning. Yeah. Let's go with the first, yeah. the one that allows us to get our money back. But I, let's hope they stay for 100 years. Yeah. Let's hope that it's a non-issue. I mean, we've had empty spaces on South Street. It's been a sore spot for a long time. And uh, 
Plenty of parking. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to me like if we if we can bring in a, a, a positive employer into town, it's, it's a win-win for us. We should do all that we can, use every error we have in our quiver to try to, because other communities will do it if we don't. Um, I mean, I'm all, I'm all for it, but I oh, think it's great, great news. Nice I just, job, Mr. Kamalo. I just, didn't realize, on that? I just didn't realize it needs a separate, a separate town meeting. That, that there's a cost right there. So let's talk about that for a sec. So the idea of them coming to town would be great. So what's the, give me the special town meeting again. Why is yeah, that? Yeah, why is that? Yeah, special town meeting is based on basically the, town, the, the company needing to make a business decision relative to where it will locate this manufacturing facility. Uh, as, as I indicated, there are other locations that they're looking into. However, um, in my last conversation with the consultant working with them, they believe that Hopkinton is really moved to the front. Uh, in, in terms Can they of, wait till May? They cannot because they, there's a schedule that is laid out by the M Mass Office of Business Development. Uh, that schedule, if this is to work for them, uh, they have to be before the M uh, MBOD uh, at the end of January. We could always cancel that meeting, couldn't we? The special town meeting, if we called it? I, I, yes, and, and in fact, in my, in my preliminary discussions with the, with, with the representatives on the company, I've, 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 I've indicated that this is a cost that is imposed on the town by this business decision, and therefore we, are, we will be asking them to partner with the town in footing some of the, the costs associated with this. What, do you, what would you guesstimate the annual revenues would be to the town if they were to come? We will find out on Thursday. We're scheduled to meet with them on Thursday, and that's when we get into those details. And at town meeting, we would be voting what? To support the TIF? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, if, we, if we schedule the town meeting and it passed, is that binding upon them to then decide to locate in Hopkinton, or could they, could they then change their minds? Have we just laid, made this investment literally? And then they say, well, thanks, but no thanks? That's possible. However, the, the investment that they are making into this discussion, I think, leads me to believe that our decision will be part of their final decision in terms of where they look at. And it would annoy the Mass Office of Business Development, too. Yeah. And so they'd be annoying a few different entities even bigger beyond us, you know, so. Yeah. So, Madam Chair, would you entertain a motion or two here? Um, before we do that, have other board members questions or comments, weigh, want to weigh in on anything? No, I've lived through this one, one of these before, and it, uh, hey, it's, 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 some work and some don't, and, it, and it's, it's always best to- uh, Give it a try. To give it a try. Yeah. You know, we, we, we want to fill up some of those buildings, we do. especially we do. the ones that they're looking at. And new employees in town is always a good thing on so many levels. Ms. Nazarul, are you good? I'm all set, thank you. Okay. All right, then we would entertain a motion. Mr. Hur, would you like to make a motion? Before that, there's probably an opportunity, yep. maybe, and we'll check with town council when we get to the motion here in a sec, but I think there might be an opportunity to pull some things out of town meeting in the special town meeting, given it's only a couple months apart, maybe we can do that and simplify our town meeting for May as well. Who knows? We'll see. Uh, so, Madam Chair, I would move that the Board of Selectmen encourage and support the town manager's uh, uh, efforts to uh, work with um, like Yeah, Lichen, Lichen Bioscience. Lichen Bioscience to locate in Hopkinton, Massachusetts in the very near future. Second. <clears throat> Does that do it for you? Is that what we need? Okay. Um, it, 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 in fact, it may be helpful, Mr. Hay, if that's okay, uh, which may include a TIF. looking into a TIF, yeah. mm -hmm. name, personal name property it. tax exemption, mm -hmm. yeah. and a projected special town meeting. So the board is not setting up a special town meeting by saying we should explore if that. Going to I was going to do that in a second motion for the town meeting part, but that's fine. Yep. So if you put it all in that motion, those would be all in my motion. Okay, so exactly. amend, amend your motion. So my motion is amended to include those three points. And I accept the, uh, the amendments. Amendment. Okay. Is that a friendly amendment? Is it hostile? 
<laughs> Neutral. Okay. Switzerland. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Good. That's unanimous. Is there anything more in the town manager's report, or is that it? Yes, there's there's an additional, I think, quick update um, that this this year, unlike in prior years, um, I'm finding the town manager's office uh, spending time attending to. To, to, to bills that are showing up in the office and, and I'm working with different uh, uh, town boards and committees and commissions just trying to find a way to resolve those bills. Uh, so don't be surprised if some of those bills show up uh, uh, at the annual town meeting. Mm -hmm. So will your new CFO help alleviate that in the future years? With Can't controls wait on purchasing and everything? In fact, I think it's, uh, it's the work that Ben Sweeney is doing the new uh, procurements and uh, grant, grant. grant manager. Uh, he's, do, he's going to do it. He's doing a great deal of work uh, making sure that uh, we know what we're buying great. and that we're complying with the law. Good. Okay. Uh, liaison reports. I have none. Nothing from Mr. Ted Stone. Anybody? Mr. Mr. Yes. Uh, to the Affordable uh, Housing Committee. And um, so the the discussion really there was a few things that they were they were looking at. Um, one is they have this pile of money uh, from developers, um, and what can they do with it? <laughs> is kind of the ultimate question. Uh, they had a few thoughts about you know essentially buying up uh, dilapidated properties, renovating, and um, and selling them off as affordable units. Um, but one of the things I think that uh, ultimately came down is they really need to talk to the planning board mm -hmm. uh, to see, to get, an, get, get their input as to what they can, what they can do with that money. Mm -hmm. um, there was also a suggestion that they, not, they, they stop accepting, they're talking, making a recommendation to the uh, planning board to stop accepting payment, payment in lieu of, of uh, building. affordable housing units. Yeah. So, Discussion is still ongoing. Beautiful. Good. Good. I have a whole bunch of them. Okay. <laughs> have at it. I, I had a busy, busy uh, uh, off season here. Um, off season. We had the uh, absolutely <laughs> the couple of us went to the uh, kickoff and the unveiling of the uh, 26.2 um, organizations um, international marathon center at the uh, Hopkinton Country Club, and uh, that was very that was very well attended with. Uh, and uh, a lot of uh, great information was passed. Uh, last Wednesday was the ribbon cutting at the um, Central Public House, and that was another one that was very well attended. It's, it's great when new businesses can open and, uh, and flourish, uh, especially if we have more parking. Um, then uh, last Tuesday, I went to the, uh, the Five Town uh, Selectman meeting. Oh, good. And uh, I, was, I was glad to hear that they're all worried about 40B and they're all envious of us. Being set, being all set to 2030, um, but the, but they um, they had uh, a lot of insight into uh, some trail grants and uh, how they how we might be able to be helped out mm -hmm. uh, um, with uh, some of our shortcomings on uh, on our central uh, trail there, and then uh, the last one I went to the uh, Mass Municipal Associations. Uh, meeting um, last week on uh, municipal OSHA, stand, OSHA standards and uh, how the towns can prepare for uh, these new OSHA standards that are coming down. Mm. Pardon me? Oh, right, and the, uh, oh, right, and, yeah, and the, and the uh, right, um, the, oh, I forgot about the mortgage company also, uh, that uh, um, uh, there was a ribbon cutting also for that, or, uh, or was more, was it, yeah, it was a ribbon cutting. Yeah, and, and the uh, introdu introduction. Yep. For a mortgage just right, company. Just right mortgage. Oh. At, um, at the Price Chopper Plaza. Oh, okay. Thank Great. you. Good. Yeah, it was a busy week. Great. Good for you. <laughs> busy guy. 
So are we still on liaison report? Sure. So myself and the chair uh, attended a school committee meeting last week. It was last week, right? Yes. Um, specifically focused on the budget for the schools. Uh, we saw the athletic department budget presentation, the middle school department, middle school budget presentation, and the high school budget presentation. Um, I think in general, they're working very hard and looking under every rock, which we would hope they do, and I know they do. Um, but they're just getting hammered with new students. I mean, there's hundreds of kids, literally okay. hundreds of kids coming to Hopkinton and it's showing up across the district and it's going to impact uh, the, the entire district from, from head to toe. So uh, we'll learn more as we go through this budget process, but Hopkinton, as we were talking about earlier, is one of the hottest you know, towns in the Commonwealth and we are seeing it in the number of students and it's not just little ones. You know, a lot of times people yeah. move into a town and they move in with their kindergarten, first grade, and second yeah. grader. They're all coming, but then there's people coming to middle school and there's people coming for the high school. Yeah. And that was discussed the other night as well. So I think a lot of, uh, I, won't, I won't use the word pressure, but a lot of uh, growth is gonna create financial pressures on all of us, everyone that lives in town, and certainly for those of us that try to massage these budgets to make them work for, for everybody. And, and you know, <laughs> In addition to just legacy, where a lot of the growth is coming from, if you look at the list, there's quite a list of permitted residential developments still, still, you know, out there that haven't been built, but they're waiting in the wings, um, you know, which is another reason why I'm not wild about added, <laughs> added residential <coughs> anything. But um, you know, there's every reason to believe that beyond legacy, we're, you know, we're going to have more coming from a bunch of stuff that's already been permitted hasn't been built yet. Growth brings new revenue, but growth brings cost. new cost too. Exactly. And the challenge is, are they gonna balance out or not? And, yeah. um, but anyway, it's good to yeah. go and see the, our colleagues at work. I can't get there this week, okay. unfortunately. I will be so there. I be to go I'm gonna be there. Um, but uh, I've always enjoyed going to the meetings and learning what they're working on. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. And, Kamala, oh. and, and you know, we have been having our budget advisory committee meetings sure. monthly to try to keep on top of it. But right now, they're still in the in the process of just pulling all the numbers together and starting to make some reductions. But it's still in the early stages, and there's a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kamalu, um, I don't know if this is the platform to talk about it or not, but where do we sit with McDowell's half a million dollars when they hit the threshold for students? Yeah, he's hit that threshold in our last conversations. He indicated that uh, he'll be sending a check to the town uh, mid-January. Mid-January. And that is that simply a one-time and then that's a closed-out deal? So if they have 50,000 kids, obviously it's an ex exaggerated analogy, but if they, is there, are there other thresholds or are there ongoing or is it just a one-time? <coughs> there are other thresholds okay. relative to uh, education needs. All right, we can speak of that offline. Thank you. However, it's not like the payments keep coming. You hit the thresholds and there's a payment, but it's not like it's not those recurring are revenue. recurring revenue. They make their one-time payment when you hit the threshold and right, it right, doesn't right. come, we don't get any more. Right, well, so. with the exception of potential other thresholds that they're gonna hit. Yeah, but when they hit those thresholds, they make a payment and then yeah. they don't keep continuing right, right, to right. make no, payments for the excess yeah. kids who get it once for each yeah. threshold. I understand. If, if I may. Yes. Um, and this may be of interest to the board. Uh, I have also been discussing with the superintendent um, the possibility of doing a detailed demographic study for the town, um, uh, focusing on the impact of population growth on all town services. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can see Dr. Kavanaugh digging into those data points. Yeah. Statistics, well, they can be manipulated. It's a great point. I talk, I, was, I only was reporting as a liaison to the school committee, right. but I know the fire department has pressure. I know the police Absolutely. department has pressure. Everybody. I know the DPW has pressure. Yep. We all, all departments have pressure because there's more people expecting services. Right, because well, if we have, if we have you know, two or three kids in a family, there's usually one or two parents and maybe grandparents, and then there's at least one or two cars coming in. And, and uh, so we've... Uh, we're hitting a lot of the uh, other entities in the town, the other mm -hmm. town departments. And, and I think that some of our projections have been off because the previous assumptions for, you know, X number of bedrooms produces X number of children has proven to be 
off in Hopkinton to some extent. There's changing family structures with maybe single parents that are, you know, in an apartment kind of situation or families that are willing to have more <coughs> children in a smaller space than we anticipated. So, you know, types of housing like condominiums perhaps where once we felt they would not produce that many school children are, are turning out to produce school children. So you can't, those assumptions that if you build a two bedroom or you build a condo, it's gonna be just young professionals and no kids are, are really not holding true. It's really thrown off the, the formulas. Was that formula set up for the legacy that 500,000, that was set up based on X amount of houses <coughs> as well as X amount of commercial space or retail space? Or was that, was that set up after they rezoned the... the there was, a, there was a balance. Got, got, there was balance. After they got rid of the retail space, it didn't... Obviously, when they get rid of the retail space and the commercial space and turn that into residential, that's going to shift the... I mean, obviously, they're going to hit that, that they, number. They, they, if I may, they, they didn't change any commercial into residential. They, they just haven't built some of the commercial. Right, they haven't built some of the commercial. So they I don't know if that's true. Uh, up at the, uh, off of Wilson Street, 55. they went back yeah. to town meeting to change that, right. but that's to over 55, so right. there will be no children there. Right. But, like, the village center didn't get built. There's the parcel down there not near yet. Clinton Street. No, not yet. But, so, you know, it was all supposed to work together to pre create a, an income balance, but much of the commercial component hasn't been built yet. It still could. So it still could, still but, viable. you know. So. Motion to reduce. Second. Are we all set? We're good. Ye yes. Future board. Future agenda items. Anybody? No. Madam Chair, if we could get, I don't know, we haven't had one in a few months now, if we could get an update on the uh, downtown quarter roadway project. I'm not saying next meeting, but somewhere. Yeah, somewhere soon. Okay. Start off the years at some point yep. to get Maybe a Maybe first of the year. On. First of the year. That's why Chief Slayman is here. That's why he's here. You can update on the downtown corridor project. Okay. Good. So, is there a motion to adjourn? So, yes. So Second. Moved. Second. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And oppose that is unanimous.